And, and I... Rafa, Rafa. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm the medic. Uh, my name is Robin Ackett Downs, and I am unbelievably overjoyed to be here with you guys and these guys. And I can't believe we made it happen. Yeah! <laughs> my name is Liz McCarthy. I'm also known as the mysterious woman in the sandwich videos. <laughs> and if any of you are Twin Peaks fans, you may have seen me in Twin Peaks Firewalk with me as the giggling secretary. <laughs> and I'm the sniper. <laughs> I sit up in tall places, turning coffee into urine. Boom, headshot. John Patrick Lowry, that's me. Hi. <laughs> well, yeah, these amazing people are here today to tell us a bit well, about themselves and also answer some questions later on. We're going to have a Q&A. And then, well, why don't we get started with just some, you know, general questions and something that everybody do want to know. So I want to know from you guys, just generally, who is your favorite character that you've ever played as? GLaDOS. I love both characters very well. I like, uh, I love Demoman. He's great fun to play and I love heavy weapons guy. And, uh, and is this question in general? Just generally, as overall. An, as an actor? Overall. Um, just overall. About yourself. Well, I would say probably Spy comes first, but I, I uh, really enjoyed playing Albert Einstein in a play not long ago. I saw him in that About... <laughs> about, yes, Einstein, uh, about his long lost infant daughter that disappeared from history when she was an infant. And in this story, comes back to confront him in Princeton, New Jersey, when he's 75 years old. So that was fun. And then my, I think one of my other favorites was uh, playing Rod Serling in a spoof of uh, The Twilight Zone for a, a, a Boeing aircraft industrial film called Foreign Object Debris. <laughs> F-D-O. Yes. So that was very much fun. Uh, I mean, I, I have to say, because of you guys, like, Medic is, is, is up there. I mean, you guys have been so amazing uh, and made this game so popular. Uh, but I, I've also um, enjoyed playing um, uh, Cos Miller uh, for the Metal Gear franchise. And um, some of you might know Miss Gary from the regular show. Um, so. <laughs> And of course, there is Mamra, the ever-living. That's right, Mamra. <laughs> well, I have to say that my new favorite role is the mysterious woman. <laughs> and I really wish she could become a character in the game. <laughs> yes, yes. You guys can make it happen. Um, yeah, I'd say, I mean, as far as voiceover roles, Sniper has to be right up there because I've gotten to do so much of him. But I really enjoy playing uh, Pudge yeah. in Dota 2 and Storm Spirit in Dota 2. And uh, there are many Earths, but there is only one Earth Shaker. Those are all fun. Let's say one, one of the most engaging roles I had was in a play uh, uh, written by Alan Akeborn about a composer, and I got to play the composer, and I am a composer, and I got to write all the music that the composer uh, ostensibly writes in the play, and that was, that was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think like most of us up here, I haven't had a career, I've just had a series of gigs, so. <laughs> uh. That's awesome to hear, and I'm sure everybody from here knows you from multiple things just like that, like you guys saw yesterday. The line of fans is huge, and as you can see right now, there's also quite a few people. Um, and there's a lot of fans, a lot of cosplayers, 
a, a lot of amazing people out there from the community. And I've heard this question over and over again, and everybody's wondering, and if, it's been, if that list has been updated from yesterday, but what is your best or craziest or funniest fan interaction or cosplay interaction? Have you ever seen anything that just has blown you away, blown your socks off? Well, I have to say that the reaction to all of our sandwich videos has been so wonderful. <laughs> And, and being known as a cute old person, still having fun at the age of 70, I think is wonderful. You know, as a voice actor, you're very anonymous. Uh, and uh, being recognized, sitting in a restaurant and being recognized uh, from these viral videos has uh, really been a kick. Uh, you know, I just... Uh, just because our faces now are associated with those voices for the first time in our careers as voice actors. Uh, even when I was uh, uh, an actor on a TV series from 40 years ago called Zoobly Zoo, I don't know if anybody remembers that show, but <laughs> um, you know, I was under a lot of makeup and uh, had ears on the top of my head and things like that. But uh, yesterday, just walking in, uh, across Starbucks and uh, Somebody uh, is having a Jimmy John's and says, sandwich. <laughs> was a thrill. Well, I, on the other hand, if I were to be uh, recognized everywhere I go, I'd need to be uh, wearing either a spy mask or a pyro mask <laughs> all the time. So I may start carrying those along with me. Uh, so I don't have that issue. I still have anonymity. Um, but uh, at the first Comic-Con I ever attended, I was absolutely stunned by the cosplay that I saw in some of the... I mean, when, the, when a spy and a pyro came walking right up to me in full regalia, I was, uh, I was verklempt. What can I say? It, just, <laughs> it almost brought tears to my eyes. Um, but no, that, that, that was wonderful. So I'd say that was my greatest interaction with the fans here. But I will say, it is an interesting uh, phenomenon to... Because uh, I've had this, this comment made before when my wife and I, who is also an actress and a singer, would get up and perform things on stage at the, at the school where our kids went, the, the texts afterwards would, would say, oh my God, they were fantastic. They wouldn't say that. They'd say, how cute. <laughs> Those old people are so cute. <laughs> so now I understand that as a kid, you're cute. When we're your age, we're hot. And now when we're our age, we're cute again. So... <laughs> So it all comes, comes full circle. Yeah, I just have to say, I mean, I, 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 I find it hard to believe that this will happen again. Uh, you know, if you were to tell me back in 2007 that uh, we were going to be still interacting with the fans of this game, uh, you know, now, 2023, guys, this is crazy. I mean, we got together in Seattle and we just started the videos. We just like, uh, we had no plan. We just went into a shop. Hey, anybody have a sandwich? <laughs> you know, and it just, and, and now look at them. It's become like this worldwide thing. And all of this support has, from you guys, has brought us all here. So yes, we I'm have you thank to you thank. You yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we not only got together, but we also have a TF2 update, right? Because of this. So that's yeah. good too. So maybe if we keep spreading the word and, you know, doing this, who knows? Maybe we'll have a TF2-3. <laughs> a first for Valve, yeah. I was very tickled um, just about 20 minutes ago when I stepped outside the door for a minute and I heard everyone screaming at me, Sandwich! <laughs> because I'm not even in the game! I'm a guest. I'm like a, the guest... Uh, artist, the guest star, but I'm not in the game. And so thank you so much for letting me be a part of this great fun. I mean, and, you know, and over the years, I mean, Ellen and I have been to a lot of fan cons over the last, uh, last mm, 14, 15 years. Since 2012. 2012, so it's the last uh, 11 years. Um, and, you know, the cosplay has really been amazing, but one stands out to me, I have to say, uh, one time we were in D.C. and this little 10-year-old girl came up to us with her father 
and she was cosplaying a turret. <laughs> and it was so cute, I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> and she just stood there with these little, these little you know, shields on her arms and a little eyeball on her chest. And, just, and she was just so shy and she wanted to meet Ellen. And it was great, it was great. But, but you know, over the years, uh, the power of the fans has been, uh, has been uh, uh, evidence to me over and over again. And when you guys get together, uh, you can move mountains. And it's really wonderful to see you all here. It's great. Talking about the power of the fans, I just got to admit, there's a lot of people, and did anybody of you guys expect the turnout yesterday? No, we didn't. We signed pictures, autographs, took selfies for five hours yesterday. The now guy today, was in LA saying, Where, "What's going on? <laughs> right, 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 right. You got this together, and I can't even see you guys." So I'm like, "Today I we're, today last night. we're like, signing oh, from five to seven. Trust me, we're stopping at seven. But, but that doesn't mean you don't get an autograph. But it is, it is so heartening, really. Uh, we all love our work. We, we've all been uh, performers, actors, voice actors, stage performers, film actors for decades. And to feel the love from you all is so wonderful, and that's why we're here. Also, if you don't get a, uh, uh, if you can't get a, uh, get one here, you can go to Streamily.com. We are all uh, clients of Streamily.com, an autographing service, and we can personalize autographs of audio shoutouts and video shoutouts for you, and you will eventually get them. So don't feel like you're missing out if you don't yes. get this uh, in the line. And we're doing a live stream on April 8. Right. On April 8. So that should be fun. With yeah. Shork. Yeah. With me. With Shork. And then after that, we plan on taking over the world. Yeah! yeah. All right, speaking of, of, of taking over the world, Recently, you guys have been taking over the internet. There's been news reports and everything about the sandwich saga. And I was wondering if we could get an inside scoop about how that came to happen. What well, do people really, like about it's it? It's really Robin's fault. <laughs> uh, um, he just had this overpowering psychotic urge to annoy these poor workers in a delicatessen in Seattle. And we all went in there and asked for a sandwich and they were so bemused, they were so completely befuddled, I don't even know if they spoke English as a first language, and we thought, if we can annoy these people, we can annoy a lot more people than that. <laughs> so, uh, and really, I mean, Robin was the driving force uh, because he just loves annoying people. He's really <laughs> a, not a pleasant person. <laughs> and, and, but but, but the, the, the first problem we ran into was that Robin lives in LA and the rest of us live in Seattle. And I started having fun. I did a, a video with, with Gary, and I thought, we're never gonna be able to do a video with Robin, because he's down in LA. And so I came up with this idea that he would be kidnapped by some evil organization. <laughs> and, uh, and that kind of kept us going. And, but really, it's, you know, Robin and I calling each other, what are we gonna do next? What are we gonna do next? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it was really no plan at all. No like, plan. Just called me up and say, hey, by the way, this is, I'm like, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Right. Let's do it. Right, right. <laughs> Um, and then with the hallucinations and the mind meld. The I mind meld, yeah, mind that's the way to stay in touch. Gary and I connect, and you know that I love heavy. Oh! Uh. <laughs> I really do love you, man. I mean, just like, Same when I played the bro. game, heavy was my favorite character. <laughs> heavy was my favorite character, and... Um, I wasn't a huge player of it, but I loved the design of this game. And over the years, like, I, mean, I didn't meet these guys until Seattle. Right, yeah. right, yeah. And uh, we just, yeah, we just were out for lunch and we went into that delicatessen and then it just like <laughs> We started. clicked. We clicked, yeah. And the bottom line is we're just having a great time, just having a lot of fun, giving back. And, uh, you know, 
We get the love, you get the love, and yeah. it's fun. So now I know how the cast it. of Friends feels. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have to credit uh, 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 Jay Pinkerton and Eric Wolpaw, who are the original writers of the game, because they wrote this incredibly ridiculous game. You know, the, the, these characters are, you know, seemingly very competent, but also incredibly stupid. And, <laughs> and that just is, is a great foundation for, for comedy. I mean, I really feel like we think, you know, any idea we come up with is completely legitimate. Uh, because it's going to be in the spirit of the game, and it was so great being a part of that of that kind of writing. And well, it was also because the comics. When we started um, getting together, we're like we had to figure out what the hell is the lore of this game. I didn't know a lot of it, and I started reading the comics. I'm like, this is just wow. This is out there. It's ridiculous. Right. Like right. Right. baboons and. The devil and all this, this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, we can't go wrong. That's right. Walk there, there, there is. <laughs> right. And I, you know, I've come kind of late to all, all of this uh, hoopla. And at first, I, I, um, I was a little uh, taken uh, off, off my balance because it's like, what, what, what is this world, this gaming world? Because I really haven't, haven't played much. We're voice talent. Some of these guys may have played games. I didn't. I went into studios and recorded lines, you know, as characters. My kids played the games. Uh, but I'm just starting to understand what kind of universe you guys have created, yeah. which is so welcoming and so much fun, and you can how you can step outside the normie world of chaos and consternation and hatred and whatever, and come here and live in a different universe, which is you know just um, ideal, idyllic. So I, I'm I'm pleased to be a part of it, and I have you to thank for that. So. Give yourselves a round of applause. I'm, I'm finally beginning to understand why gaming. Yeah. Why gaming. Yes, it is a crazy series you guys come, came up with, and I think it fits the, uh, the, the comic, the, no, the humor of the game perfectly. And I, we've been wondering a lot, the community, when you guys film that, do you get recognized? Because I, I know that a lot with, with the faces and all that yeah. might not match up, but they're gonna he they hear the voices. Does any has anybody ever turned around? No, and like, when we were on the uh, monorail in Seattle, uh, the driver of the monorail. Of course, these people are working for the MTA, and this wonderful young woman. You know, you're supposed to pay every time. You know, the monorail goes for a mile. It goes from uh, you know the center house to Westlake, and if anybody's been to Seattle, you know it's it's just a short trip. You're supposed to pay each way. Well, she realized who we were, and she just let us stay on the monorail and do all our you know videoing, and she was so supportive. And then of course we took a picture with her at the end. <laughs> But it, it was so great. She knew who we were. She was a Team Fortress 2 fan. And then, and the, and then when we were filming uh, Tower of No Refunds, that was really the first time that, I mean, we were in a park and there were a lot of people walking around. Just the title is ridiculous. I know, I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but people come up and talk to us while we were filming. And it was the first time, because I'm kind of the director and I'm trying to keep things going and stuff like that. And these guys are, oh, fans, let's just chat for a while, you know. <laughs> Uh, and so, you know, a shoot that was supposed to take, I think, 12 minutes ended up taking three and a half hours. I think that was... <laughs> but but it's, it's just a whole lot of fun because people hear the voices. You know, even, even now, more people associate with our voices than with our faces. Yeah. And if they hear it, if, you know, if they hear heavy saying, Sandwich! You know, they come from miles they around. Just, their ears perk up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, I can remember uh, 10 years or so ago when my son was still in the middle school, I think, and... Uh, and we were going out to a yogurt shop in some local mall, and he said, Dad, um, we're going to go in. My friend runs this yogurt shop. Uh, that's his part-time job. Uh, I just want to warn you that he is an enormous fan of Dota. He likes to do the international. I do one voice in Dota. I'm the, I'm the invoker in Dota. And um, he said, just be, be prepared when you walk in there that, you know, he might be acting strange because invoker's his favorite character or something. And sure enough, we walk into this yogurt shop, and uh, um, he, the man's hand was shaking when he shook mine. It was like, I, he said, I, I played the game so much, I can't believe I'm meeting the invoker. And uh, I realized that 
for a, a very small and select group of, of uh, Americans, and world, actually people all over the world, we are major celebrities from these games, uh, just because of our voices. And um, it was uh, fantastic. I thought, you know, at least to my kids yeah. and to your generation, you know, we, we've done something really significant and we've given something to you. I'm not sure what, but you'll like it and I love that. <laughs> My sister was at a uh, Verizon store in Schenectady, New York, and uh, I get a call in Seattle, and she goes, the, uh, the guy who's uh, waiting on me uh, doesn't believe that uh, my brother is the heavy. Could you say something? And I said, yes, Robin, I am heavy weapons guy. And she got such a good deal. <laughs> That's right. Actually, I think we got free yogurt that night, too. <laughs> free yogurt's always, always good. Yes. So, a lot of people also, this is a question that's probably going to be asked a lot, but so we're just going to answer it right here. Um, if, you know, any of these people want in the future to be a, an actor, anything like that, what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the advice you'd give them if they want? Get in an acting class. They're lots of fun, and uh, I, I think they're also very therapeutic because you learn to let go of your inhibitions. So and you can either go to an acting class or an orgy, really. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had many inhibitions. <laughs> but anyway, get in an acting class because uh, all of us started out with theater training and dance and music, and it's fun. It's yeah. just plain fun, the, my the advice. The other thing, too, is you don't know uh, what your, where your talents lie. So, you know, my first voiceover class, I had no idea, you know, what voiceover was, really, mm -hmm. and I just started making a list of, uh, okay, well, these are some of the voices that I can do. And I mean, my career has just gone crazy with all these different little niches, but those were all just found out from people asking me if I could do things. So just start out and uh, it's so easy to get in, uh, a simple setup with a mic and recording. Right. I mean, everybody can do it on your iPhone now with voice yeah. memo. Yeah. And yeah. Just start practicing and start doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, uh, imitating, uh, even uh, in music, uh, uh, Beethoven learned how to write music by imitating Haydn. Uh, and so, you know, I imitating your favorite characters on TV, recording yourself and see how accurate you are that can really train your ear. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to do the sniper or something like that, go ahead and record yourself and try to analyze, okay, is it too high? Is it too low? Am I, am I shaping the vowels correctly? What is he doing that I'm not doing? And you can do a lot of that training yourself. But also, I think it's important to know that, like, when Ellen and I were in school, video games weren't the ghost of a glimmer in any tech guy's eye. There, there were no video games. This was in the 70s, and I didn't get into video games until the 90s. And I trained to be as a composer. Um, Ellen trained as an opera singer. So the arts in general will get you prepared for any kind of art form that takes place in time, any kind of storytelling. Um, and know that you know, 20 years from now, there could be a thing that none of us have even conceived of that you might be getting into. So, you know, leave yourself open to new things because yeah. none of us saw video games coming down the pipe when we were. Wow. And we, you know, to, to, to tail onto that, I, I would say just develop as many skills, performing skills as you can. Uh, I wanted to get into musicals. I didn't even really know how to sing when I got to Seattle, but I took some singing lessons and I started getting cast in, in musicals. And, uh, but then I realized that that's, a, that's one useful skill, but if you don't read music and dance a lick, <laughs> then you're at a disadvantage. Uh, and and it's, it's harder that way. So if you can juggle, if you can play instruments, John plays I don't know how many instruments. Uh, if you can dance, if you can uh, um, do mime, all of those things will come in handy at some point, you know? <laughs> Seriously. And I, I, would add, I would add that in my career, the one thing I wish I had spent more time doing Oh, sorry. <laughs> the one thing I wish I could spend more time, had, had spent more time on is improv. Because you are always called upon to 
People hire you not because they know what they want you to do. They want you to do something wonderful right away and tell them what they want. So uh, I would say learn how to improvise because, you, you know, in so many areas, especially in the voiceover area, you'll, be, you'll, you'll find that very, very useful. And by the way, I teach improvisation. Yes. And, you know, that, that's how a lot of these characters were created, too. Um, the writers basically brought us into a room and, and gave us some lines, but a lot of the lines that you hear in the game came out of all of us improvising, just yeah. saying random, you know, gigantus or, no, not that, but, you know, like, the angry god of the badlands and, you know, all these weird things. Like, where do they come from? We just... Yeah, improvise. absolutely, yeah. One tip I give actors, what I tell people, you know, uh, to get rehired once you're a voice actor, is if you can make the guys behind the booth in the booth laugh while you're working. Yeah, they're gonna remember you. So that was always my thing. I was always Or if you can scare the crap out of them. That's all good too. <laughs> That's one of my, my most fun things. Uh, and I promise I'll give the microphone to you. Um, but the most fun thing that I ever, that I ever had in, in the booth was saying a scary line in a way that made the writer shit his pants. I mean, because <laughs> a lot of these writers say, okay, this is gonna be bad. But you know, if, when an actor comes in there with intent, and you're just you know a few feet away from the guy, and you sound like you're really going to pull a knife and stab him. That, that it's it, it's a lot of fun. And now, I would just tag on and just say that the biggest lesson I've learned from this whole experience, as getting older and sort of like, what is my career? Am I an actor anymore? Just keep saying yes. When something comes to you and an offer is made and it sounds crazy, like when my friend John said, hey, would you do me a crazy favor and come out to a sandwich shop in North Bend and just laugh in the background of this video I'm making? And here I am in Boston months later because I just kept saying yes. John said, come to Boston with us. I was like, oh, nobody wants to see me. He was like, just come. So I said, yes. Just keep saying yes, and that will take you to something new and something new and something better and more fun. The more you can leave yourself open to life and opportunities, that's where the fun is. Yes. Yes, so in just a bit, we're going to move to you guys, and you guys get to ask some questions. But there are few rules though, like make sure no questions about updates, future content, cut content, because, you know, NDAs. Because we don't know. <laughs> and of course, um, well, don't ask the questions that was just asked, like acting, etc. You can Google it. Um, and then just, yeah, keep the questions civil. And, uh, <laughs> and that, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I think we're gonna get a mic set up really soon. And uh, while we do that, I was wondering, could we hear some voice lines? The cart is nearing the terminus. I am not one of your fried chicken tramps. <laughs> Seduce me! <laughs> I have to follow that. <laughs> Let's go practice medicine. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Dad, 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 I'm not a crazed gunman, Dad, I'm an assassin. <laughs> well, the difference being one is a job and the other's mental sickness. <laughs> oh, they're going to have to glue you back together in hell. Amazing. So I'm, I'm thinking people who have a question, are we going to start forming a line and getting those going? 
You in the cowboy hat, you look like you wanted to ask a question. <laughs> yes, you. Why don't you get up to the mic first? Because I saw you jump with glee when we... Okay. Wow, there's a lot of questions. That's a lot. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> to those of everybody, is everybody? <laughs> I don't actually have a question. I have a, a statement for you guys. Uh oh. As a Minecraft fan here, I would like to say to the. TF2 community, that you guys are doing an amazing job of re-communicating the T Fortress 2 community and the T Fortress 2 developers and Thank people. you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so first off, I just want to say, I think this probably goes for everybody. You guys are amazing inspirations to all like voice actors, uh, aspiring and otherwise. Um, but I was wondering, when you guys um, first came into Team Fortress 2, did you guys come in during the uh, very early, realistic, dark shooter, or uh, was it more so a uh, when you came in during like the silly, bright uh, art style it has now? Silly. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're you're probably thinking of Team Fortress, the first one, yeah. and uh, when when Valve took it over and turned it into Team Fortress 2 from the get go they were thinking cartoony, silly, zany stuff. Because the, uh, the, the sequel... Definitely, I think all of us came in this silly, bright <laughs> time. <laughs> Since that's it's the only place that we could play like that. Is, well, that does that answer your question or no? Yeah, well, the, uh, I don't know if this is like common knowledge. It was going to come out originally in the 90s, and it was going to yeah. be a more gritty, like the original one, but then... Uh, took nine well, years. Uh oh. <laughs> well, then they heard of us and they thought, well, if we get these guys, it'll be really funny. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Good sure. question. Thank you. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I was okay. Like I am literally shaking because you you guys are so amazing. <laughs> and I, especially especially Robert, you were my. That is my favorite. Even though, Thank you. Even though I'm just a sniper, which makes no sense, but you were my favorite. You look amazing. Okay, so my, my question is, if you, if you was, if you was to speak from the, the mercenary point of view, like who would you think would be your mercenary fa other favorite? Oh, Ooh. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Right. Who, who would be your merc's favorite merc? So, like, you know, who, what character would be your character's favorite character? My character would be heavy! <laughs> well, I've always had a special loathing for Scout. But I have to say, I've always had a secret thing for the administrator. <laughs> well, as much as I hate to admit it, I have developed a certain affection for a Scout. <laughs> he, look, he reminds me of myself in hell. <laughs> Well, I like the sniper. <laughs> We're mercs with benefits. <laughs> and I'm developing a wild crush on mysterious woman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Great question. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I was hoping to come up with a question in line when I was standing there, but I failed. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for bringing so much joy to everyone who has played the game, even for people who haven't played the game. I just want to say, like, as voice actors, maybe you don't, not, not don't realize, but the depth and, like, how many people you have reached with your voices, how much happiness you brought them, 
um, especially laughs as well. So just thank you very much and uh, have a great PAX. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Hi, I just want to say um, uh, sniper and heavy weapons are my favorite classes in Team Fortress 2. And um, I just want to say I also play a poker night at the inventory, though if, uh, <laughs> some of you guys remember, though, and I can do a big, strong, bad voice. So my voice and strong, bad, um, hey, uh, heavy weapons, do you remember me? It's me, <laughs> strong, bad here. I, I, I'm, I really want to join Team Fortress. I owe a lot of debt from the inventory, though, if like, if I, and I played some Peasant Quest 2077, though, shooting up gangsters, uh, for, uh, and I'm in so much debt because, like, I bought a fun machine, 5,000, uh, do you think you're hiring heavy weapons? <laughs> what? <laughs> you remember me? What are you talking about? <laughs> no! I Glados! Glados, can't you pay off my debt? Look, I can't I just... understand the word he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is madness. I think he's having an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Glados, can't you pay off my debt though? I, I owe like ten uh, twenty thousand dollars. Killing. Just agree, my friends, just agree. All right. Killing you and giving you good advice aren't mutually exclusive. Thank you for your wonderful question. <laughs> oh, no! uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I'm trying to be a voice actor as well. Great. And Great. Peter saying, that was not medicine. <laughs> So thanks guys for doing the panel and obviously I'm just gonna echo like the appreciation, more specifically the fact that you guys are continuing to engage in these characters. I think there's you know plenty of voice actors out there that they do their role and then they put that down and they don't wanna go back to it. And especially they almost get a little annoyed when fans are like, hey, can you do the voice again? You know? Um, but so I've been playing Team Fortress 2 for 10 years. I have 5,000 hours in game and oh. Predominantly, right. I've been a soldier main, and I just wanted to ask if you guys have any uh, sort of anecdotes for Rick May, any sort of yes. experiences for, you know, what it was like to work with him. Yes, so, so my husband John has a radio drama uh, production company with his partner Larry Albert. And, you know, Gary Schwartz and Dennis are, and Liz were all Seattle actors. So we all have gotten to work with the wonderful Rick May. Yeah. And we miss him so much. And the sweetest person on earth. And we loved working with him. And he was always ready to laugh. Yeah, he was our Inspector Lestrade in our uh, Further Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And so he was in many, 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 many episodes. And, but he also did other shows for us. And uh, yeah, very creative guy and, you know, just a pal. Just wanted to pal around and have fun with everyone. Yeah. So we, we all miss him a lot. We all miss him a lot. I remember when I first got to Seattle, I wanted to do an audition <coughs> for something. And I had a song that I uh, wanted to sing. And I couldn't find a copy of it anywhere. Somebody said, call Rick May. I got in touch with Rick, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got that score in my, uh, my closet over here. He had everything, and he was an encyclopedia of bad jokes. <laughs> I will always miss that, you know? I had to finally say, enough jokes, my ribs are hurting as it is. Yeah. So uh, Rick was a really jovial and fun guy to work with. Uh, thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would you ever cosplay as your characters? <laughs> you what? Would you ever what? Would cosplay? I'm wearing purple. He does. I already. just want to point out. Also, thank you guys so much. This is probably the best day of my life. I've gotten to beat a bunch of nerds who really like my, the, the game and have cosplayed. Big fast, chuckle nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, this one is specifically for Ellen and any of you. I know a few of you have mentioned having singing talent before. But um, I'm going to be performing um, live singing at another con very, very soon. I think like two weeks. I'm freaking out. And um, I was just wondering if you had any advice because I haven't exactly performed like live vocals and dance at the same time. I know you have um, opera experience. So I was just wondering if you had any cool advice for me so I stopped freaking out as bad. Now, tell me your name. Uh, my name is Kelly. Kelly, so what will you be singing? Um, I'm going to be going to Anime Boston. I'm going to be singing a cover of a song from an anime called Zombieland Saga uh, called Revenge. 
So um, what is the story of the song? So the concept of the song is kind of like the concept of the show. Um, uh, whatever you want to do, if you are really, really dedicated, do it. Nothing will stop you. Death cannot stop you. As long as you keep getting up over and over, an end is just a new beginning. So Kelly, in your mind when you sing the song, who are you singing to? The world, I guess, or anyone who's willing to listen or anyone who needs to hear it. Because I, I know suggest, it's something I need to hear. I suggest that you have a particular person in mind and you're trying to help them. You're trying to bring them to themselves. And you, Kelly, should have someone in your mind who you know personally and you want to say this to them. Yes. And then it doesn't matter who's listening because nobody else is listening except the one person that you're singing to. Because if I were going to sing, this was a triumph, <laughs> and I'd just sing it to you, Kelly, just to tell you that you've been a terrible test subject. <laughs> years I've waited to hear that, by the way. But, but you see, Kelly, everybody else wouldn't matter to me. So that will help you with your nerves if you are focused on the person that you are singing to, that you are telling everything to. That's your job. You don't have to worry about anything else. And it doesn't matter what you sound like, and it doesn't matter what you look like. It matters what you communicate to that person. Because that person is everybody. Mm. But yeah. specific, yeah. Thank you so much, thank you. I have a quick request, just because my daughter just texted me. Can you guys all say, good morning, Natasha? Good morning, Natasha! Good morning. Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, um, now that I'm up here, I kind of forgot what I was gonna say. Um, I guess if there was any voice lines from what you did back then, was there anything that was like your favorite voice line at all? Well, in, in TF2? Yeah. Um, well, of course, I think we just did that. Oh, that, that was what it was then? Yeah, okay. yeah, Shork asked us to do that okay. and we did it. Okay, I didn't know it. if it was just like one in general or not, or you had one that no, was No, they were specific. favorites. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, well, but you get to ask something else now. Okay, cool. Um, I guess I, I got into TF2 because of my partner and everything. He's been like an avid gamer for forever. I've just been into it the past few years. Um, I guess I interact a lot, not just with the game, but with the 